He says, consider your path. Consider the direction you're on. And God is telling this people right now, you that are here, God is saying, what road are you going down today? What path are you on? Have you thought about where you're headed? Do you know where you're going tomorrow? Do you know where you're going to be next week? I'm not talking about the natural. I'm talking about the spiritual. God is telling his people, you better get right with me. You better get right with me. We've witnessed the power of God in this place. Demons have been cast out of people. People have been saved. People have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Miracles have happened here. Healing has took place, happened in this place. Now what? Are we going to be satisfied with what we've seen over the years? I'm not going to be satisfied. I want more of God. If you neglect God. Amen, brother. That's true. None of what you're doing means anything if you neglect God. You can come to church every Sunday and die lost. Right, right, right. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, you can be filled with the Holy Ghost 20, 30 years ago or, or even last week, and something can come in and make your heart not right anymore. If you let it. Come on, folks. This is every day. Buddy, this is every day. I said this is every day. This is every single day you got to live this thing. There was a time that Jesus went to the home of Martha and Mary. And the Bible said, the Bible said Jesus come in. And Brother Todd, it talked about, it talked about Martha. And Martha's busy up doing everything. Hey, look, it wasn't that she wasn't doing nothing bad because Jesus was there to eat. They had to cook for him, Rodney. The house had to be clean. Martha, she's up and she's 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 dusting and and she's she's running the Hoover and and she's and she's cooking the meal. She's got the beans and the taters on the stove and and she's she's worried about all this stuff that she had to do for God and and, and that's all and that's all good and well. It's good to have God's house clean. Everything's gonna be good for God. But you see, there was something happening with Mary and Jesus. See, Jesus was over there sitting down. Martha's all busy, but Mary. Mary is at his feet. I said, Mary's at his feet. And Martha said, Don't you care? Don't you care that she's not up helping me? I'm having to do all this by myself. Don't you even care? And he turns around and he looks at Martha. He said, Mary has chosen the good part. Mary has chosen the good part. When are you going to get to the good part? The good part's at his feet. The good part is seeking him with your whole heart. The Bible said seek him while he may be found. Amen. 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 The children of Israel are back in the place they're supposed to be. But now there's work to be done. They're back from exile. Everything, Brian, they're back where they're, they're exactly where God wanted them to be. But now they got to go to the mountain. See, let me tell you something. They put more work on themselves than they had to. Because if they'd have took the wood that was there when they got back and built God's house first, 
They wouldn't have had to go up to the mountain and get all the wood and bring it back down. Right. Yeah. Because, see, they didn't do what they were supposed to do first. You see, there's too many people out there that's neglecting Jesus and doing other things first. And God ain't pleased with it, folks. The things that you're putting above Him, God is not pleased with it. Some of you need to figure out, you ain't, you ain't shouted in 20 or 30 years, and maybe not ever. Some of you just need a good shout. Yeah. Okay? But there's some of us that's been shouting all along. And I figured out that, that, that this is what a shout is. See, a shout is only a reaction to an emotion that you're feeling in a moment. Right. See, when I feel the Lord, Todd, I shout. Right. I can't help it. Yeah. I can't help it. It's the way I react. Not everybody shouts. But let me tell you what a shout does. Shout will give you some freedom. It will, get, it will get a monkey off your back yeah. that's, that, that, that takes your pride away that's worried about what everybody else thinks about you. Right. And see, some of you don't want to do that because you worry about what somebody's going to think about you. Don't worry about what nobody thinks about you. If I worried about what somebody thinks about me, I'd have quit preaching a long time ago. Right. But it's not just a shout because that shout is an emotional thing that don't last long. God wants to take us beyond a shout. Right. You see, the Bible says that the angels rejoice over souls. Right. Yes. They don't rejoice over your shout. Come on. I'm sorry. Right. It, 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 as good as I can shout sometimes, the angels don't care. Right. <laughs> but the Bible says this. When one soul comes. Yeah, amen. Somebody will shout that out. Right. The Bible said when one soul comes, the angels rejoice. If you can't rejoice over somebody being saved and giving their heart to God, then you probably ain't saved. That's right. And we need more rejoicing over souls. Amen. And we can't have rejoicing over souls unless souls come in. Amen. That ain't going to come in by themselves, folks. Right. That's why I'm telling you we've got work to do. They will not come in on their own. You can have revival services from now until the Lord comes back. You can have six-week meetings like they did in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. And people just came out. People don't just come out no more. That's why God goes down to the sea and says, I need fishermen. Oh, yes. I see, we got a tax collector and we got a doctor and we got all these people and, and, and all these disciples made up, made, made up this 12 group of people that, that followed Jesus. But you know what? He had to have a few fishermen in the bunch. I said he had to have a few fishermen in the bunch because the fishermen knew what it took to toil all night. The fishermen knew what it took to be out there and not catch nothing. But they had to make a living and they had to get the boat back out there again the next day. They knew that they had to keep on until they brought something in. And God needs fishermen in this hour, in this time. And if you're not a fisher of men, you're the you're doing the wrong thing. Right. Every one of us is called to be a fisherman. Yes. Right. That's right. In my prayer time the early on this past Thursday, early Thursday morning, I began to pray and God spoke to me something about this church. And I'm telling you what God is telling me. God is saying he wants this church to begin to cultivate the next generation. Hallelujah. It's time for the next generation to experience the real power of God. Right. The real power of God. Yes, hallelujah. Sunday school classes are great. We need them. We need them. We've got to have them. They've got to be taught. But I want to tell you, they need to be in this altar and experience the power of the Holy Ghost. Speaking with an unknown tongue. Prophesying. Seeking God with everything they've got. That's what our children need. I ain't apologizing for what I'm preaching. 
We've had some good things happen, but we don't need to stop. It's only the beginning. God wants us to experience more than we could ever imagine. The first instruction that God tells Israel is to go. Go. And then he said, go build. Go build. Go get the wood. Go build my house. You need to get that word go seared into your spirit. Like a hot iron seared into your spirit. Folks, we don't get, we don't get points for showing up to church every Sunday. Right. Come on. Our work is out there. Yeah. That's where our goal is. Our goal is not here. Our assembling is here. Our goal is out there. Amen. Right. Amen. Go ye therefore into all nations. The Bible said work. He, he, what he's really saying is I need you to go and I need you to get the wood because there's work to be done. Right. Now look here. Let me tell you something. The word says work while it is day. Yes. Because the night cometh when no man can work. I want you to know that time is quickly running out. Yes. Yeah. But let me just get to where we're at right now, okay? Can I, can I preach to where we're at right now for just a moment? Biblical prophecy is escalating by the hour. Yes. I am not going to pretend that I know what's happening concerning Russia or the United States or China or Iran or any other country. But I will say this. We are closer than you can imagine. I don't have a timeline, but I can tell you right now, we are getting closer to the battle of Gog and Magog by the day. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the day. See, we've seen all this stuff in the Bible. And it ain't, listen, it don't really mean a lot to some people until it really starts happening. Right. And then you can begin to go to the Word and you say, oh, that just happened. Right. Now you say, well, I don't, like, I don't like the things that are going on now. I don't. Let me tell you something, folks. It don't matter if you like who's in there or you don't like who's in there. God puts people in place in order to fulfill right. what's going to happen in this Word yeah. down the road, right. whether we like it or whether we don't like it. Right. Right. Somebody said over there, well, it's bad. Well, hey, it's got to be before God comes back. Right. Right. That's the word. There's going to be war before God comes back. There's going to be famine before God comes back. There's going to be rumors of war before God comes back. If there ain't, then God lied. Right. This thing has been accelerated. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. This is scary. You beginning to study the end time battles in the Word of God. Begin to study the end time battles. And you come back and tell me where the United States fits into them. Come on. That's right. Come back and tell me where the United States fits into the battle of God and Magog. Come back and tell me where the United States fits into the battle of Armageddon. I'm going to tell you, you won't get a clear answer. No. No. And that ought to scare everybody in this house. That's right. right. Because you know what? The United States may not be there. That's right. We may be gone before. Right. Yes. You say, where do you get all that? It's been there all along. I said, it's been there all along. Amen. See, people don't start paying attention to it until it starts happening, Brian. Right. Yeah. You let something start happening in Israel, then everybody, oh, we've got to pray for Israel. We better stand for Israel. You should have been standing for Israel all along. Amen. Right. You should have been praying all along. Amen. Well, we got, we got a World Trade Center attack. We got terrorists attacking. We, we got to do something. Now people flood the church. Should have been flooding the church all along. Yeah. Don't wait till something bad happens and then react to it. Right, amen. Right. You see, I'll tell you about the United States, where the United States fits in. I don't know because it ain't clear in the scripture. It's not clear. You see, the Bible says we know in part. 
and we prophesy in part. We see through a glass darkly, which means we don't see everything. Can you see that street out there? Right, right. See, God doesn't always give you the clear picture of everything, right. folks. But let me tell you right now, I know if I had the key... I know that there's something out there that I can go out there and I can get up in and I can drive to the house if I wanted to. Even if I can't see it very clearly, I know that there's something out there that I can go get in and it'll take me all the way home. Even if you can't see it very clearly, you got to have the faith that there's something that you can do that'll take you all the way home. Lord have mercy. I'm trying to I'm trying to hush. I'm trying to stop, Christopher. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> God's given us parts. Yeah. Russia, Iran, they're both gonna play major parts when this thing's over. Right. Those, I know those two. Russia and Iran will play major parts when this thing winds up. They are going to attack Israel from the north. And it looks like Israel is going to be, I'm telling you scripture, it looks like Israel will be defeated. Everybody will say all hope is lost. Israel is gone. And there won't be an army step in. There won't be a nation step in. God will step in and say, oh, you're not going to be this guy. He'll be shut up. He'll be shut up. God will step in and say, this is my nation. This is my people. You won't stop my people. You won't touch my people. He will step in all by himself and fight that battle. That's Bible. That's Bible. I'll tell you what is clear. There's a lost and a dying world, and we better be working. There's a lost and dying world that needs to know Jesus. And we must not be satisfied with coming week after week and it being just another Sunday morning service. Right. Amen. I'm tired of that mess. Yes. Demonic powers are at work in the world. They're killing people. They're ravaging homes. They're ravaging lives. In church, there is a strategic attack that is happening to the church and it's happening to the ministry. It's harder to preach than it used to be. It used to be so easy for me to get up and preach. It's too easy. Chris, I'm going to preach. Good. It came so easy. Getting the pulpit and taught, it came so easy. Just, God would know it would be there. There ain't a minister that you can talk to right now that says it's easy. It's not easy anymore. It's harder because demonic forces are attacking the ministry now more than they ever have and more than you ever have before. You need to pray for the ones that watch over your souls. Yes. 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 Amen. We're in warfare. And it's more than just confronting a demon or a bully on the playground every now and then and say, leave in the name of Jesus. It's more than that. You listen to me, folks. You need to understand something about your enemy. He's in it for the long haul. I said he's in it for the long haul. While we're busy, we're, we're, we're busy uh, Preaching and teaching spiritual warfare, and our enemy is playing strategic warfare. Yeah. Planning attacks in advance. We've been flying by the seat of our bridges too long, folks. Right. All the while, the enemy has a plan for our downfall that's been in the works for years. So, what if he loses a battle or two? So, what? He's not in it to win a battle. He's in it to win a war. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not in it to win a battle. You're in it to win a war. I lost some battles this week. You've lost some battles this week. Come on, tell me you ain't. I ain't worried about the battle I've lost. I'm worried about the war that I'm going to win. Amen. Right. I can't dwell on lost battles. 
we approach spiritual warfare sometimes like it's a game of dodgeball. Mm. Somebody just, the devil throws something at us and, hey, in the name of Jesus, Lord, dodge that. Mm. And the devil's playing chess and you're playing dodgeball. Come on. You're wearing yourself out playing dodgeball and he's sitting here going, Next year, I can get them with this. Oh, come on. In three weeks, I can get them with this. Yeah. He's got a plan for you before you even thought about where you're going to be next week. Because, right. see, he can look and say, oh, see, they're doing this right here. And if they'll just get just a little bit further, I've got my, I'll get my foothold. Don't you think that ain't the way it works, folks? We're dealing with principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places that is strategically attacking the church. Yeah. I don't believe all that, Pastor. It don't matter if you believe it or not. It's the truth. Right. Right. You don't have to believe anything in this book, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. Right. We better plan for the enemy's defeat instead of letting him plan for our defeat. Right. There is a new stage of warfare that's adding pressure from all sides in the lives of every believer. It is not like it used to be, folks. That's right. It's not like it used to be. Amen. We've been on autopilot way too long. It's time to grab the steering wheel of our lives again. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. You hear me? I'm preaching a pastoral message this morning. You've heard all the evangelistic messages. They're not supposed to be. Listen, I wish I could preach like they can. They're not supposed to preach this kind of stuff because you're not their sheep. Right. They're supposed to get up and make you shout. And they're supposed to get up and make you happy and say amen. I'm, this is my job to sit there and make you think. Yeah. What road am I on? Consider your ways. What direction am I taking? Don't buy in to that demonic doctrine that says repentance is a one-shot deal. Amen. Oh. It needs to happen daily. Yeah. Don't buy into that falsehood that you got saved and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and now you can sit back on cruise control and not do nothing. Right. Oh. I don't care how long it's been since you've been full. Get filled again. Amen. Get filled again. Yes. You're going to need it. Amen. The Bible said the bridegroom was coming, and there was ten virgins. There was five wise and five foolish. The five wise brine kept oil in their lamp the whole time. The five foolish let it leak out. And guess what? When the bridegroom came. Right. Wait a minute. Yeah. The lamp and the oil was what identified the virgins. Without the oil, they could not be identified, and they were passed up. Right, right. The glory of this house shall be greater Hallelujah. than the former. The Bible said that we would do greater works, folks. I'm almost done. The Bible said we would do greater works. Here's my question to you. Where are they? Where are they? I'll tell you where they are. They're laying dormant. Because greater works will never happen without unity. Greater works will never happen unless everybody can get on the same page and say, let's do this together. It will never happen. That's why the apostles were able to do what they did. God, it's because they were all on the same page. You can't see greater works if you come in here every Sunday with leaving on your mind. Won't ever happen. Won't ever happen. We won't ever see something as soon as we come in we're wondering when we're going to get out. That's baloney. We're either going to be in this thing. We're either all in this thing or we're not in this thing at all. Amen. That's the way it works. 